So that's everything on the side of producing obstacles in a general way. Now that we have general uh, obstacle reduction networks, the next step is to avoid all collisions. Autopilot already has a lot of safety features. Here I'm showing a particular mode of failure of humans where they accidentally press the accelerator pedal instead of the brake pedal. So here, for example, these people are pressing the axle pedal, thinking that they're pressing the brake pedal, but the car realizes that, that they are doing this and are heading towards a collision and automatically cuts out the acceleration, presses the brake to prevent the humans from colliding. Um, in the previous case, there was a person, but in this case, this, this driver would have launched the car into a river and the autopilot saved them. One final video here where uh, this person again is trying to park, but then misapplies the pedal and then would have crashed into the storefront uh, and maybe grandma here as well. While we already save a lot of collisions, there are still collisions that humans get into that the autopilot system could prevent them from doing so. Here's an example of that where this person again misapplied the accelerator pedal. The autopilot system saved them from their forward collision but then they changed gears and then went backwards at full speed and hit the garage. Uh, while it's incredibly sad, I'm glad that no one was harmed in this accident, but it's kind of senseless to collide when we have a great system that can detect general obstacles. So one might wonder, now that you have obstacles, it must be trivial to avoid collisions. While it's tractable, it requires a little bit more uh, thought into doing, doing this correctly. I say this because building a safe system, uh, if safety is the only thing that matters, is quite easy. But in order for a self-driving car to be actually useful, it needs to be safe, but also comfortable and reasonably fast in transporting the person from A to B. To, il to illustrate this, if you take a hypothetical example where this imaginary car has infinite jerk at its disposal so it goes at full speed at highway speed say 65 miles per hour and then just before crashing a few centimeters before the crashing uh, it applies tremendous amount of braking in, in say infinite jerk and axle to brake and it would obviously instantaneously stop before hitting the obstacle while this can be deemed as safe uh, first of all it's not practical because you don't have cars that have infinite braking but even if it had in frame braking, we do not want to use that unnecessarily. E even typical, like our Teslas, for example, have 10 or 11 meters per second square of braking, but we don't want to use all of that unnecessarily. Secondly, the car can drive extremely slow. Say, for example, the car is crawling at one or two miles per hour. It can hit the brake at any time and avoid collisions very easily, just that it's practically really annoying to drive so slow. That's why I say it takes a little bit more intelligence to do driving in a safe, comfortable, and reasonably fast manner. If you naively approach this driving problem using purely search-based techniques, for example, this compute can actually take a long time because you, again, want to brake early on with low enough jerk. So you need to predict that the collision is avoidable or unavoidable many seconds before the collision to hit the brakes in a smooth manner to safely and smoothly avoid a collision. The search space of such uh, things can be quite large and can take many seconds or minutes to produce a good solution. While running online in the car, uh, the, there's not enough time to do such compute. So what we do instead is we try to approximate these with neural networks. Especially with the recent advent of implicit fields, um, we are able to tap into the same work to produce implicit fields that encode obstacle avoidance. So what we do is we take the occupancy from the previous networks, we encode that occupancy into a super compressed MLP essentially, where this MLP is an implicit representation of whether a collision is avoidable or not from any particular query state. And this collision avoidance gives some guarantees for collision avoidance for some time horizon. For example, we can ask, is a collision 
avoidable within two seconds or four seconds or some time horizon. And the query can be some high dimensional vector state. Here I'm showing uh, the position, orientation, velocity, the lateral and longitudinal accelerations of the car. And based on this query state, the network can output the probability of whether a collision is avoidable or not. This gives extremely fast lookup on the order of few microseconds to produce this uh, approximate probability of whether a collision is avoidable or not. In order to illustrate this, Let's look at this example where uh, you're seeing a top down, a road from top down view. Black pixels here are obstacles. The gray pixels here are just the road surface, and the white pixels are road paint, such as lane lines. In this top view in 3D space, you can place the car at any pixel location and simulate whether a collision is avoidable or not. If you imagine the car to be a single point mass, this and the collision avoidance horizon to be immediate, so whether the current time is in collision or not, this would really just be the location of obstacles. But the point, as the car is not a point mass. It has some shape. It has a rectangular shape and it can rotate as well. So here, if we show um, whether the shape of the, when, when we convolve the shape with the obstacles, we will know whether instantaneously, whether the car is in collision state or not. So here you can see that as the car rotates, the collision field is changing. The green color output means that it's in a safe spot where there is no collision. And the red pixels mean that the car, when put in this configuration in, the, in that pixel location, is in a collision. So as the car rotates, you can see that uh, the narrow corridors kind of close, close down because in that configuration, the car would be in collision. But when it's aligned, it opens up and becomes more green, meaning that the car would not be in collision. This is a trivial task to compute, and we do not need neural networks for this task, obviously. But we, and we extend the time horizon to, for example, two seconds. Now the car can perform some actions to avoid the collision. So you need to have a search over this search space to know whether a collision is avoidable or not. In this example, the vehicle is at a fixed velocity of 13 meters per second, that's long tunnel speed, uh, and the, we are changing the heading. And you can see that as the heading changes, things quickly either go into collision or collision is avoidable. We can also vary the velocity at a fixed heading. So here the car is facing straight, and then we are just changing the velocity uh, to be increasing or decreasing. And you can see that different regions um, open and close down based on the velocity. So if you're at a low velocity, the car can go get really close to a curb and then adjust course. You can obviously do this jointly as well. Here we are changing both the velocity and the heading of the car. And you can see how based on the configuration parameters, the network correct, correctly thinks that uh, different locations can be, uh, either the, in the car can be in different locations where the collision is either avoidable or unavoidable. Finally, you can combine all of this to roll out some trajectory that uh, avoids collision uh, and makes progress. Here we are simulating an un inattentive distracted driver who just presses the accelerator and doesn't do any steering. And the car comes in and then intervenes whenever necessary to uh, either steer the car or brake as necessary to avoid the collision. The car starts out here in this rollout. And then since it's heading towards this wall on the right side, it immediately hits the brakes and also steers hard on the left side. Once it's aligned there, and then it knows that it, it's on trajectory to go right again. So it turns right side and then aligns itself inside this narrow corridor. But the interesting thing is that once it's inside this narrow corridor, even though the obstacles are close to it, it does not freak out. It says that, okay, it's actually fine. We can go faster because there is no risk of collision or a collision is easily avoidable. Doing this again, naively would have taken multiple minutes to come up with a solution. But then 
doing this using networks our enables us to quickly query for whether a collision is available or not and then take actions that prevent collisions from happening when you simulate this in closed loop you can also see that uh, the car is able to uh, avoid collisions here the regular autopilot system is not running this is just the collision avoidance system running on top of a simulated human driver who's not paying attention this driver is just pressing the accelerator uh, and then not touching the steering wheel and then the as they are getting close to a collision the collision avoidance system kicks in and then turns the wheel or presses the brake on its own to prevent the car from colliding yeah so in summary uh we sh we showed how we use multi-camera video networks to produce dense occupancy and occupancy flow. We also briefly saw how you can use uh, large multi-view uh, constraints from the fleet to supervise this in addition to our auto-labeled supervision. Once we have this great occupancy, we can plumb this into uh, other neural networks that produce an efficient collision avoidance field. And if we do all of these steps correctly, we can produce a car that doesn't need to crash ever. Um, maybe one missing piece is more engineers and scientists to work on this problem uh, with us uh, to enable to build this great technology. Thank you.